Hey, it's Tom from WPWithTom.com. In this video, I create a lawyer website. I show you how to make a law firm website step by step in about an hour. In this tutorial, we make this exact website, and the only cost associated with making this website is the website hosting itself. And that's basically needed to host any website live and on the internet. So there's really no getting around that. But I use a free WordPress theme and a free builder to keep the costs at a minimum. I do my best to cover the basics so you can have a nice looking legal website when you finish. If making a lawyer website like this looks good to you, let's get started and dive into it right now. The first thing that we're going to need to do is sign up for hosting and get a domain name. So we need web hosting and a domain name so our website can appear live and on the internet for other people to be able to find. I personally recommend using Green Geeks, and that's what I'm going to go through in this tutorial itself, but there are other options out there as well. I'm going to have a link in the description below for Green Geeks. If you use that, that is my affiliate link, and I greatly appreciate it. It helps me to be able to continue bringing tutorials like this for people online for free. Now, if you already have a domain name and hosting with someone else at this time, you can just skip this section. I'm going to have timestamps in the description below this video that you can just click on to go to the next section where we start setting up the website. So the first thing that we're going to do is navigate over to where it says WordPress hosting right here. And there's three different plans right here, the Ecosite Lite, Ecosite Pro, and Ecosite Premium. Now the key difference between these plans is that the domains hosted on Ecosite Lite right here, they only allow one to be hosted here. And on Pro and the Premium, you're allowed to host unlimited domain names on them. That's the biggest difference between each of these plans. Now, if we scroll down, we can see that there's some other things that, like nightly backups, free website transfers. There's a free domain name included. So if you don't have a domain name yet, you can get one for free with the purchase of a plan. And you can see right here, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. Also, it includes Cloudflare CDN, and that can help speed up your website as well. So there's a lot of big positive things about these plans that most WordPress plans from other hosts don't actually include. So if you're happy with one of these options, I would recommend either the Pro if you're going to have multiple websites or the Lite if you only intend to have one. Now I'm going to go over here and click Get Started on Ecosite Lite and just go through the process. So here you're going to need to choose your domain name. If you already have one, you can use, I want to use an existing domain name and go through the process here. I'm going to go as if we don't have a domain name and I'm just going to put in terrificwp.com and this is all just for an example. Here you're going to be able to fill out your information. I actually already have a plan, so I'm not going to go through all these steps, but some things you want to be aware of is there is this who is privacy. It's 83 cents per month. To have this and this will keep your information private so it's not on the internet for everyone to see the other thing that you want to look at here is they have different lengths for the plans the durations make the plan cheaper as you sign up for a longer duration of a plan so if you were to just sign up for the yearly plan you would only pay 69.35 for the year and then if you were to do three years you would pay 116.15 to be honest with you, to have a website live for $116 for three years on the internet is pretty crazy to me, especially if you're making a business or creating something that's going to generate revenue for you. It's a no-brainer to sign up for a longer plan, in my personal opinion. I don't get any benefit if you sign up for a longer plan as an affiliate or anything like that. I just think it makes a lot more sense as far as costs and what you can save. Just be aware of those options. And again, this Ecosite Lite, you only can have one domain name on. The others you can have unlimited. So after you've filled out all the information on this page, you can click where it says create account and get started. I actually already have an account. And because of that, I'm going to dive into the next section as if we're logging in to the area here, this front end area right here where it says customer login with the information that we just filled out on the order page. You should get an email confirmation as well. And we'll just go from there and pick it up on the next section where we install WordPress itself and then begin to go over the WordPress dashboard area and make some little changes to improve our overall experience within the back end of our website. So let's dive into that next. 
All right, so after we complete the signup for Green Geeks here, we can go up to where it says Customer Login to log in to our account with the information that we just set up. And I'm just going to put in my information here and then log in to the dashboard area or the cPanel area of our website. All right, and now when we're logged in, we can see right here it says cPanel. That's where we're going to want to click. And here we're going to set up our website with WordPress. So if we scroll down, we have Softaculous Apps Installer down here. We're just going to click on WordPress. And then here we're going to go and click Install Now. And this will be the domain name that we're going to be installing it on. But you want to make sure it says HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash then your domain name. You don't want anything to be in here in most cases. I'm going to leave it blank for this. And then this is where you would put your site name and site description. So if you were having a legal or a lawyer website, for example, you might want to put the law firm name in this area and then a description of maybe where they serve or what kind of law firm they specialize in for legal action, things like that. So down here, we can put in an admin and username. I'm just going to put in lawyer and then for the password I'm going to just make something up right here I'm probably gonna hide it and I'll just put in something that I'll be able to remember now it's also important to put in a good email address for this admin email that you're going to be able to remember so you can retrieve your username and password if you were to forget it so you might want to do that here is put a good email address for yourself and then select the language I'm gonna leave it as English in my case and I'm just going to install this limit login attempts plugin here. That's good for security purposes. It's not going to hurt to have that installed. A lot of these plugins are very good. Actually, I'm going to install this classic editor right now as well. And let's go down and click install. So it takes a moment to install here. It definitely won't take three or four minutes. And now it says right here, congratulations, the software was installed successfully. And this right here is going to be our administrative URL. You may want to save this somewhere or maybe email it to yourself or something like that. So you have this and it's going to be your website name dot com dot net dot org whatever you have slash WP hyphen admin and that's where we're going to log in with the login and password that we just set up. So if you want to you can right click on that and it should open up into the dashboard itself and there we are. And the other thing I want to go over real quick before we dive into actually changing some of the settings in WordPress is if you go over here to security and then you can go to add SSL certificate you would select your plan and your domain name right here hit continue and you would add your SSL certificate in this area now to verify you can see that it's enabled right here in SSL certificates where it says let's encrypt you can go here and manage it and then you can also uninstall it, install it, whatever you need to do with your SSL certificate to get it enabled. You want to have it installed to make your site more secure at the end of the day. So this is where you can verify it. That process may take a few minutes to go into effect, but it really pays to have SSL on your website. Now, if you're having trouble with that, you can go down to the live chat support area down in the lower right, and they can help you out with getting this set up on your site. Now, we're pretty much done in this section. I'm going to X out of this and I'm also going to X out of this. Now remember you might want this URL here with the WP hyphen admin at the end of your URL to log in. Now once you're logged in like this, we're going to go through cleaning up some of the settings on the back end here in the dashboard of our WordPress site. So if we actually open up the site, we can see what it looks like real quick. And it's basically this generic blank site right here. This says, hello world, recent post, hello world, a common right here. And there's a few other things going on. It's very plain at this point. And we're going to go through changing some of the basics. So if we go down to post, we'll see right where it says, hello world here. We can go to trash that because this is just a dummy post. And then after that, you'll go into the trash area and then delete it permanently. And it says, one post permanently deleted. So from there, you can go down to where it says pages, and we can actually go and delete this one as well, this sample page, and again, go to trash and delete it permanently. So now we're left with just this privacy policy page, which is a good one to have on the site, at least if you want to add it. You don't have to have it in your menu, but I recommend having it on your site somewhere. Next, if we go down to comments, sometimes there's comments in here. In this case, there's none for us. 
we can go down to where it says themes next and I'm going to delete some of these older themes that we're not using so if we click on theme details and then delete and hit OK to confirm it again theme details delete and OK now you have to have one theme enabled so I'm going to leave this one for now but we're going to delete this here shortly now if we go down to where it says plugins again I'm going to go and delete some of these ones that we're not using and this is the two that we had installed earlier in the process here the classic editor and the loganizer plugin so I'm just going to go into this real quick if you go to settings and loganizer and go to brute force you can change how many retries you have to get your password right I usually like to put about seven and then you can choose if you get locked out this is really to help prevent people trying to get into your website with a malicious attack of brute force where they're trying all different types of passwords and by doing this and saving the settings here you can choose how many retries you're going to allow how many how many minutes they're going to be locked out for things like this it's definitely worth having for basic security on your website so if we go over to where it says settings we can click this and we can change a few things here so in this case I'm just going to make the site title Smith and Jones legal and then down here I'm going to just put lawyers representing the Denver area and this will go in the top of our website right up here where it says my blog my WordPress blog that was up there before once we set this in place here we're going to have this new message here this new title and tagline at the top of our website so as we continue on down here you can change things like the time zone that you're in this will come into play if you have a blog it will tell when your time is being posted and you can actually schedule posts within a blog so it can come into play to have the correct time zone here here you can set up the date format that it's going to be displayed the time format you can choose which day of the week it starts on and I'm just going to save the settings here another important one right here is permalinks this may be the most important one in all of our settings and I like to change this to be post name and the reasoning behind that is the default post structure here just says P equals one two three so if you went to a website and you were looking for a blog post on a DUI lawyer let's just say it would say P equals one two three while this one could say DUI lawyer right in the URL and people know when they look at it that that's what it's supposed to be and they're looking for the right thing the link is the right thing before they click on it from Google or another search engine so it's better to be optimized in this way and have your sample post right here be the post name structure of what you're actually going to try to write the article about and rank for within search engines so I'm going to go and save these changes right here and that about wraps up the settings that we're going to be changing for now within the WordPress install here that we just set up next we're going to dive into setting up our WordPress theme and the starter site that comes with it so we have some content that we can build off of quickly so let's dive into that so if we navigate over to where it says appearance themes we're going to be able to install or add this new theme here and if we click on add new at the top we can see this is where all the themes are for WordPress if you look there's a popular tab that shows you literally thousands of themes right here and actually right here is the theme we're going to be using it's called Astra you can also type up here and search for Astra as well and I'm just going to click install for right now and the reason that we're going to be using this Astra theme I'll activate it here is because it gives us a lot of flexibility for a free theme and a lot of themes don't really do that and it also comes with the ability to integrate Elementor with the free version or the pro version but you can make a website for a very cost-effective amount with a free theme like this and the free Elementor builder as well so I'm just going to click on where it says theme details here I'm going to delete this theme here so we're just left with this Astra theme and right up here it says did you know Astra comes with dozens of ready to use starter site templates install the Astra starter sites plugin to get started so let's go over to where it says plugins add new and we're just going to search right here for Astra starter sites and it should pop up as the first one right here we'll just click install now and we'll activate it and now we can actually click on C library or you can also go over to where it says appearance Astra starter sites so here we'll have to select our builder I'm going to go with the Elementor builder here 
I do like Brizzy a lot, but I think Elementor is better for this type of tutorial. And I'm just going to click Next. And here we're going to be brought to all their starter site templates. So if you wanted to, you can see it actually auto scrolls and you get an idea of what the home page looks like on a site like this. So let's just say you wanted to look at one right here. You can click preview. And if you wanted to have this website, you can go through each of the pages and learn more about what the website has going on. You can actually go and just click import site and it will just take a moment to import it. Now we're going to go through that process right now. You can hit X up there to go back. We'll go over to where it says free. And I'm going to type in lawyer up here in the box right here. And this is going to be our website. So you can click preview on it. If you want to take a look at it, you can go through and look at the site. It looks very professional and it's great for a free theme or a free starter site to be able to build off right here. I'm just going to really go through the setup right now and then we're going to get into editing it a little bit here as we progress through this. So let's go to where it says import site. And it says it's going to take anywhere between 2 and 10 minutes. Generally, I think it usually takes about 30 to 45 seconds when I've installed these. But it depends on the plugins and the site that it's installing here. So let's just pause the video for right now, and then I'll come back once it's ready. All right, so we can see right here that it's done. It says it imported in just 39 seconds. In my case, you can click Done and View Site. But first, I want to just show you this is what our site looked like before we had this on here and now if we click done and view site you see the same URL wpfundamentals.com wpfundamentals.com this is what our new site looks like with Smith and Jones legal lawyer, lawyers representing the Denver area and then it has all this information and, and the starter site just import it right on here for us to be able to edit and tweak to the way we want to have a nice looking website so I'm just going to go back here for now. I'm going to X out of this. So we go back into the dashboard area. And from here, I'm actually going to show you how to create a logo for our website in case you want something different than what this has right here. So let's get into how to do that now. So there are now more tools ever out there for creating a free logo. So in this case, I'm going to use the Hoth and I'll just paste that in. But you can use the link below in the description if you want to navigate there or you can just go into Google and type in the Hoth logo maker and you should be able to find it from there. Now what I'm going to be doing here is just going through the steps and making the logo image here with their free logo maker. You can add symbols and text and everything like that and then you can have it sent to your email. So make sure you have a good email address that you'd be comfortable with this being sent to. To get started I'm just going to hit new and I'll hit yes to create a basically a blank canvas and here we'll just go and add symbol and in this case there's actually a section in here with legal images so it's alphabetical order we scroll down and it says legal right here now what i wanted to do is get something that kind of fits with the look of the site right now that we have by default so we have this blue and this kind of goldish yellowish color i'm going to go over here and i think i'm going to go with this one but i will show you that you can actually change this and edit it so what you can do is you can grab it and drag it around as you hold the mouse down and then drop it anywhere you want on the screen and you may see right now that it's flashing over the gavel in, in the image here so what you can do is you can actually click on it you can choose to hide it and remove the gavel with by clicking this eye and then you can put it back if you want as well you can change the color right here you just simply click on it let's say we want the gavel to be a different color i don't know maybe a little more dark we can have it like that and if you want to edit the whole thing, you can very easily. So you can choose different areas. So right now I'm on the blue. You can change the color of the blue. You can choose to hide it. I don't think it looks very good when it's hidden. And you can also go, let's click on where the stars are. And you can change those as well if you don't want those there. I'm going to leave that all there. I think it looks really good, almost like a perfect fit for our website and our current color scheme that we have going on here. So to add text, let's just go over and click add text right here. And I'm going to then drag the text. You can either put the text to the right, you can put it underneath. Depends what you're going for. I'd say in most cases, the symbol is to the left and then the text is to the right, just like the Hoth has it here themselves, or like this default one that we have right here was formatted. I'm going to leave it in the same kind of format with it being the symbol to the left and the text to the right. 
Now what you can do here is click on this to edit the text style, the font style right here. So we can go through here and choose something. Let's just say you like this one right here. I don't know if that looks super professional, but you can go through and choose one that fits for your needs and what you're trying to get the desired look to be here. And I decided I'm gonna just go with this one for this example here. Now, what we can also do is, so let's say you like the, one of these colors over here that you're using in it and you want it to match, you can click on it. So if I click on this blue right here, I can go and click on this and I can actually copy this. This is the code for the text color. And if I go over here and I change this to the same number, I paste this in here, now we have the same color text right here. Now we can also change this as well to obviously put our law firm name and I'm just gonna put Smith and Jones right here. And then if you wanted to, you can actually add more text or add basically like subtext right here. So you can either do it like this or you can actually go, I'm gonna delete that real quick and you can click on here and duplicate it so you retain the same font and then you can make a subheading right here. So how you can do that is you can actually go and subtract right here. And maybe I'll put just legal right here or a law firm or something like that. I'll just put legal. I'm going to move this over a tiny bit. And I'll center that. I might make it one bigger or two bigger. I don't know. But either way, you get the idea. You can make a pretty easy, nice looking logo pretty quickly here. So I'm going to just go and click save and download in this case. And you want to put in a good email that you're going to be able to retrieve this at. So let me put that in here. I'll click save and continue. And then it will get sent to our email. So this is kind of important. It says you may edit your logo using the following URL. So you might want to copy this URL in case you don't like how it looks and you just want to tweak something small. Be sure to save that URL so you can come back into it and edit where you left off rather than start all over again. So I'm going to go over to my email real quick and then I will show you how to download and install this logo onto our site and upload it to our site. And now you can see that I got your free logo from the Hoth message right here. It was just a minute ago. So you can actually go and download the files right here. I'll click download and it will download to the computer. So you can actually go right here and go to show in folder. And I'm going to just click right click on it, extract all, and you have to choose where you want it to extract to. I'm just gonna extract it right here. And now you can actually move and manipulate the file. So what you wanna do is make sure you get this PNG file that says transparent right here. I'm gonna move that over right on to the desktop. And there it is. I'm actually gonna rename it as well. So I'm gonna name this one Smith and Jones Legal Logo. And now that it's over there, I'm going to X out of these. And I'll navigate back to the site here. And from here, I'm going to just X out of the email. I'm going to X out of this as well. And over on here, I'm going to go and edit and add the logo and change this logo. So what we can do is go to where it says Appearance, Customize. So right here, you can see it actually has this little pencil. You can click edit on it. It will take you to the logo section where you can change the logo. So let's just click change logo. We're going to upload our file. So we select files, go to the desktop, and we'll find the logo here and upload it. So what I would recommend doing every time you add an image is change the alternative text to be more optimized for what keywords or things you're trying to rank for with your website. And I'm going to put Smith & Jones legal logo right here, just as a best practice. And I'll just click select. And here we can have the option to crop it. I'm going to just crop image. And now we can see the logo is right up there at the top of our website. I'm also going to change this one as well and add it in there. Choose image. And now it is going to be able to be displayed as a retina logo as well. So we shouldn't have any problem with the logo. If you want to, you can actually change the size right here, make it a little bigger or smaller whatever your needs are. I'm gonna have it be probably about 300, just I think it looks fine with that, maybe even a little bit bigger than that. But you can adjust it as needed. So from here you can also add a site icon and that is called the fab icon. Right now we do not have one up here. If I click on site icon, 
I'm just going to add something basic for now like this and I'll select it. I'll just hit crop image just because I can't even tell if it's cropped right or not. Let's go and publish real quick. And now if we go over here and refresh our site, we can see that we have this new fab icon up here and we have our new logo here as well. So next I'm actually going to go through how to change the pages here in the menu and remove some of them that I don't think are necessary for a legal website. I just want to go through about three or four of them so you learn how to go through and make the basic changes and I don't want to be too repetitive on the changes like changing text every single page for every single area. It gets really repetitive and boring I think in tutorials when people do that. So let's just go over how to change the menu here in that structure and then we'll dive into editing the website right after that. All right, so from here we can actually navigate back over into the dashboard by clicking the X here in the upper left. And right here we can go to where it says Appearance and then Menus. And we can start to edit our menu items right here. In this page, you can easily add and remove pages to your website here. So let's just say you want to remove the blog, for example. You click on this and then hit Remove and it removes it from the menu. Now, just because we removed it from the menu does not mean it was actually deleted from our pages section. So it's still on the website. It's just not going to display in the menu here. The other thing I'm gonna get rid of from the menu is the FAQ page. If we go over here and just look real quick before I actually save it, you can see the FAQ page doesn't really offer a whole lot. It just has these questions and answers here. You could actually probably combine that into something like the about page where you can answer some of these generic or basic questions right there. And the other one was the blog page. And although a blog can really drive traffic to a website, you'd have to be posting pretty regularly. And I don't think that most law firm firms really have a blog. Maybe I'm wrong in that case, but you can delete that or use it if you want to use it as a way to drive some more traffic to the website. I'm going to take the blog off for now because I really don't think that most lawyers are going to be wanting to maintain a blog like this, but maybe they do, maybe I'm wrong. So anyway, I'm gonna get rid of those two pages from the menu for now. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna to go to where it says contact and I'm going to copy this URL and I'm gonna make this button right here. So when you click request an appointment right now, it doesn't go anywhere, but I'm gonna make it, when you click this request an appointment, it goes to the contact page itself. And then you can actually send a message through this request and appointment with the contact form that we're gonna create. So let's go over and save this menu before we continue here. And now if we refresh, here we go. It's right like that. We can actually remove the contact form as well if we'd like. I'm gonna do that right now. And I'll save it again. Our menu is gonna look pretty blank right now compared to how it was, but that's okay. We still have four different options up here, home about the practice area and to request an appointment. It's pretty straightforward. So what we can do to add this contact page to be on this button right here when we click on it, we can actually go back here and then we can go to where it says Appearance, Customize. And here we can actually change that. So once this loads, we're going to see that there's this little icon here. We can click on that and it will take us to this request appointment area. And here is where we'd link or paste in that link to contact. So in my case, it's wpfundamentals.com slash contact and you can actually test it after we save this and you can change the text if you want if you don't want it to say request an appointment you could say contact us whatever you want to say right there I'm going to just go and publish it and now if we go back over here and we want to give it a test let's click on where it says request appointment and now it goes to the contact page so I know it doesn't say contact right here but we can still direct it to that contact page I hope that makes sense so the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to increase this menu size slightly and increase the text size slightly on the site as well. So what we can do is go back over here to the appearance customized section and we can go to where it says global typography and right here I'm actually going to go to where it says base typography and I'm going to change that. So if you see right here just watch the text up here I'm going to increase the size of it and you can see it go up and become a larger text. However, it's going to affect all the text on the website when you do this. So you really have to be careful with how much you're gonna actually increase it. It was at 16 when I initially started and right now it's at 18. That does increase the menu size slightly there. So if you wanted to, you could 
play around with these different font families here and maybe find one that's going to fit a little bit better for your needs. One of the best fonts out there is Leto right here and that could be something that would work for you. It's on 18 right now. It makes it a little bit bigger up here but it's a little thin I feel like. You can also increase the weight and make it bold but then again it's going to affect everything once you do that. So now the text is bold down here as well. It's really up to you. If you like that look, you can leave it. I think it makes it a little bit easier to read for most people. So I'm going to leave it as is, and I'm just going to click Publish. And again, if you want to just refresh, you should be able to see this in effect. Now we have a more bold menu here with more bold text throughout the site as well. So there's other changes you can make within this customization area. You can actually go back and change the colors, base colors, and mess with them. You can also do a lot of different things, change buttons as well. Down here you can change the header and change different things within it, make it transparent. If you also want, you can go down to the footer area down here and go to footer bar. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the site, you can see it says copyright 2019 and that's right here, site title Smith & Jones Legal, which is the site title right here, Smith & Jones Legal. And then it gives credits right there. It says powered by Smith & Jones Legal. If you wanted to change that or remove that, you could do that right here. The other thing I wanted to just quickly show you was the header format. So if we go right here and we go to primary header, you can change the layout of this header. So let's say you wanted to have the logo on top. You could do that by clicking right here in the middle. And that will rearrange how the menu is structured. I know some people really like this logo at the top. I used to always like making my websites like that, but over time I've started to go with the logo to the left and the menu to the right. I think more people are just used to that, but that is an option that I wanted to show you as well right here within the primary header section. So there's actually just one last thing I forgot to show you about this menu. So let's go back and X out of here. And if you wanted to make a drop down within the menu, you could literally just go and click on about and you can rearrange it. And then you can also go diagonal to it right here. And now it will be home and a sub item or a drop down item would be about. So let's just save it. I'll show you what it looks like. If we go to the front end and we refresh, now it says home with a drop down about. So that's how you actually add a drop down to the menu. And I'm going to move it back over. You just click and drag it. You can rearrange them and everything like that. So that's how you do that. It's actually really easy to do. And I almost forgot to show you that, but I wanted to at least get into that and save the menu here. So we're just going to update it over here. And now we have this home about practice and the request appointment options at the top in our menu. So from here, we're going to actually get into starting to edit our website with Elementor. Let's get into this fun part now. All right. So to get started with Elementor, let's first just navigate over to where it says pages right here. And in this tab, I'm first going to delete some of these pages that are not currently in our menu. I am going to leave the contact page. and I recommend you do the same in this case but I'm going to trash where it says blog. And then I'm also going to trash where it says FAQ right here. So now we can move over to where it says trash and then we can delete these permanently. I'm going to go to bulk actions, delete permanently and apply. Now it says two pages permanently deleted. So if we go back over here, we have the about contact home practice area and this privacy policy is good to have on your website. So, I'm going to leave these pages here and then move into actually going to where it says edit with Elementor over the home page here if we hover there. So it takes a moment for this to load. I'm just going to click got it right here because they added some new changes to Elementor. And if you look over here, here are these elements on the left side that make up the basic or free version here of Elementor. There's 30 of them in total. They range from everything from text boxes, images, videos, buttons, spacers, star ratings, galleries, progress bars, icon lists, tabs, toggles. There's so much over here that you get for free built into their editor. Now there is a pro version. I have a link to that in the description if you want to use that. And it has a ton more features as well. Add on these to make a lot more customizations than you can make with these. But this is pretty darn good for a free plugin that we get to use. So some other things I wanted to cover down here are where it says navigator. And I'm going to get into that as we progress through this, but this allows you to rearrange different elements on your site. It's a very nice tool to have, and you can basically move elements from one section above another or below another. It makes it a lot more flexible with the site. 
If you go right over here, you can go to history and that will allow you to redo and undo edits or changes that you make. So let's say you make a mistake and you want to go back to how it looked a few clicks ago. You can click on there and navigate back to how it looked before. It's a great feature to have. And then right here, responsive mode, that's just going to show you what your device looks like or your website looks like on different devices. So you can see right there, it's mobile responsive by default with the Astra theme. And there you can see it in this responsive mode. And right over here, you can preview changes as well. So I wanted to go over if you wanted to change some text on this page. So right here, let's just click on this, for example. You can see that you can actually start writing and deleting the text right here on the site itself. And if I wanted to, I could actually go and just make this, say, Denver or something like that. And then I can just click Update right here to save. And that's the other key button down here is this Update button. And that saves whatever changes you make. So if you go over here and you refresh, now you're going to see it says Denver, Colorado right here. And you can also just do that with any section and edit it. Now, if you went into where it says style, you can actually change things like the typography and the size and things like this for the actual text being displayed on a site. You can change the color as well right here. So let's just say we wanted it to be red. You can do it red. You can change it however you really want to change it. You can make it look. Let's say I don't like how this text right down here looks, for example. I can click on it, edit with text, or just click right in it. Go to where it says style, text color, and then I can choose to make it dark right here like that. And then it will look a little bit better, in my opinion. If you want to, you can do that across the board with all these different areas as well. You can go to where it says content. Right now we're in icon, so that's on that icon right there. You go to content. And that's where you would change the color as well right here. So it changes this header color right there. And that's for the title. And this is for the description, this gray. So if you want it to be darker, you could change it as well. Maybe it doesn't need to be the exact same color. And then let's say you wanted to use the same color over here for this one. You can actually click on this and copy the hex code right here. Go over here, click Style, Content. And then you can just paste it in and you have the same color on this one as you did on the other. So I'm going to delete it, paste it in, and now it changes right there. This one up here is still not as dark. So let me X out of that real quick and I will then make this one dark. And now we have the same dark and the same descriptive text color right there. So you can change those texts and mess around with it as much as you want. Another thing I just wanted to show you, I'll just update it real quick, is if you wanted to change the background image, it's actually pretty easy to do. You can right click here, click edit section. And now we're within this big header section up here at the top. Then we can go to where it says style. And here is the image that they have right now. Now it has this thick blue over overlay right here. So the image normally looks like that. If you wanted to go to where it says background overlay and change the color, you could do that. You could actually make it completely transparent so then there's no overlay, but the text gets very difficult to read with white text right there. So it's best to have some kind of overlay. Maybe you don't want the full overlay like they had. Their overlay is basically about this much. And maybe you want it to be a little more visible. You could do something like that, but just keep in mind the text is going to be harder to read in a scenario like that. So there's a few places you could actually go if you click background and you wanted to add a new image instead of this one. And there's free to use images on sites like unsplash.com there's another one called pixels.com and there's another one as well called pixabay.com and on these three different websites if you were to search for something like courthouse let's just say you can find images maybe that's even the same image that they're using i'm not even sure um, but no it isn't but it looks very similar so you could find a courthouse you could use a gavel now these images up here are for Shutterstock and they do cost money, but literally this looks like it's the same image as that pretty much. So you could actually use one of these for a courthouse type image or something like that. And it's going to be free to use. Same goes for over here. Let's just type in lawyer and maybe you want to have something like this. It looks like they use similar images throughout the site already. And you could have something like that as well. Again, 
you could do something over here and on splash I'll just do courthouse again just to show you the difference in a variety of images that you can get so there's a lot of different images that you can use for free on your website if you want to so let me just go and I'll just download a random one here let's go with this one because it does look kind of similar you can click free download I'm going to choose this size because that's almost perfect for our website right there 1920 by 1251 I'll click download I'm not a robot and download I'm going to X out of the other ones as well here and now if I go back over click on the image so we're going to go I'm going to get out of this real quick so we're going to go right here right click edit section and then we'll go under style and it's under background right here to find this image if we click on that we can go to upload files select files I'll go to my download section and here it is now you want to change the name for the title and the alt text again maybe you could make it say like Smith and Jones legal header or something like that so you at least know what it's about or where the image is and I'm going to paste it in the alt text and insert the media right here and now it is the background image now see it's very difficult to see this image compared to the one that we had on there before right here you can at least see it a tiny bit this one you can't see at all I feel like so if we were to go to background overlay we can probably reduce the opacity right here so it's at 97 percent you can change it and maybe have it be something like this like 75 percent might be good 0.75 and you can still read this good enough and you can st still see what the image is behind here of the Supreme Court house right here so I'm gonna go and exit out of this image and basically just this is to show you some basic edits on the site itself here now there's some things that I would change I don't really like these boxes here so let me just go and I'll click X and that will delete that section but I do like this blue bar to break up the sections that they have on the page here so I really just wanted to show you how to do some basic changes you can edit all this text by just clicking on it like I did above right here and changing it you can change the font the typography the color everything that you want on it with this by just clicking into it I don't want to be too repetitive throughout this tutorial I think that makes it really boring but I'm going to just show you how to make some changes on the about page here next and I'm actually going to go over how to navigate over to that because if you were to go up here and click on about you can't actually move over to the about page you can't move over to the practice page so there's a specific way that you can do it within Elementor and I'm gonna go over that and how to actually add a new element right into the page here on the about page so let's dive into that next alright so how we can actually navigate over to the about page is pretty simple if we go up here in the upper left there's these three white lines we're gonna click on that and then we're gonna go to where it says finder and here we can actually just type in about and it will say about posts we're going to click on that and now we'll move right over to the about page once it loads here so now we're in the about page and we still have the elementor editor enabled right here and ready to go so what i'm going to do is actually go through adding some of these elements from the left side to this page because this page is pretty blank right here i actually don't even like this section i'm going to go and click delete here to delete it or you can actually right click and delete individual ones one by one so if you were to just hit right click delete you can delete one right there and then you have three left so you can rearrange things like that very easily I'm actually going to just delete the whole section and then I'm going to scroll down here and it says drag widget here so if you want to add widgets here you can do that I'm going to add a few things that would be about the company just some generic things just as an example here so let's add the star rating I'm going to drag it over and now we can see these stars appear in the element right here so if we want to we can use this and center them we can go to style and we can resize them let's just make them 40 or so and if we're happy with how that looks we can actually add a new element below that so we can just go and click this plus and here you can choose your structure for the element I'm just going to use a one area here and hit plus again right here and I'll drag a heading over and I'll drop it in there below I'm gonna center that heading as well and you can edit the text right here on the screen or over here where it says title you can also resize it so let's say you want something smaller or larger you can do that here 
I'm going to leave it with h2. And I'm just going to write something like highest rated law firm in Denver. And I'll go and click update here to save that. Now, something that I like to do is add spacing between. If you see right here, there's these empty boxes. And if we just click on one, we can see it says spacer and then it says 70. If we click right here, 70, click right here, 70. So I would like to keep it consistent as we're making this website. So I'm going to add a new one, make it a full width again, click the plus, and then right here you can actually search up here. Spacer's right here, but you can search right here and then drag it and right in there, drop it, and change the size to 70 right here. And now we have the space between each section. So let's say we want to add something else right here. We can go and click the plus again. I'll do full width again here. And now I'm going to actually add in a toggle. Similar to the FAQ page that we had deleted earlier. If you go down here, it says toggle. We can go and drag and drop that in right here. And it has some dummy text right in it. So this is toggle one. This is toggle two. If we want, we can actually go and click right here to duplicate and make more of them. So we have four or five right now if we add one more. So now we have five different questions in here that we can write. So let's just say, where are you located? What is your specialty? Just some basic questions. If we go down here again, we can just add another question. So basically you can add as many questions as you want here and change the text as well that shows up as the answer for the question. So if I were to click on this one, the second question here, right now it says this lorem ipsum, which is dummy text. So if the question is, what is your specialty? We focus on divorce proceedings and getting the best outcome for our clients, something generic like that. And then you can just click update. And here I want to show you what it actually looks like when you actually look at it on the final site here. So if we go over and we click about, we can see that we scroll down. There it says highest rated law firm in Denver with the five stars. Now this is where you locate it. If you click it, it opens up. What is your specialty? I kind of don't like that it disappears once you click on it. I wish it kept the question there, but that's okay, I guess. If we want to, we can also add spacing at the end of this. So see right here, it goes right down to the bottom. You could add a header even right in between there and make it so you can actually have a title like frequently asked questions or something like that. So let's actually do that. If we go over here, first I'm going to just add in a heading. I'll click this plus and I'll drag the heading over into here and drop it in. And from here we can actually go and change the heading right here on the screen. So let's just say frequently asked questions and I'm going to center that and I'll save it. And this is a perfect opportunity to show you how this navigator works. So we want this section right here to be above this in the order, but below this spacer. So what you would do is you can click where it says navigator right here in the lower right. And then when you are over a section, you can see it has this little eye and then it makes the blue box around it. See this blue box right here? If I'm on that and I go up to here, let's say I click this one. Now the blue box is up there. So what I can do is I can actually take it and drag it down. And now this frequently asked questions is right above where the toggle are with all the questions, the Q and A's for the answers that people might have about our specialty and our law firm and things like that. So that's how you would actually set that up and make it so you can actually view the site in a different order here. Now let's say I wanted to also add in that space below so I don't have this space right at the bottom where there's nothing. If I wanted to, I can literally just right click on this and duplicate it and then take it. And what I can do from there is highlight the section, get the spacer, and I can drag the spacer down to the bottom here beneath where it says toggle. So you have to play around with it a little bit and rearrange it, but now we do have a space here and we have a space here between the two sections. So you can update it after that. If we go back over to the site and we refresh, we should see there's a space between it, frequently asked questions, and then there's another space with 70 pixels as well because we duplicated that one. 
So I know it doesn't look amazing, but it really shows you the basics of how to make these changes. If you wanted to, you could add questions to all of these here and make it look a little bit more professional. I might clean that up after we're done with this tutorial here. But for now, I just really wanted to show you how to add some elements and how you can actually use the navigator to rearrange the elements on the page here. So next, let's actually dive into where it says the practice area of our site. And we can start making some changes over here as well to this page. So let's get into that part here next. All right, so from here, let's go just through this page real quick. And I'm gonna leave a lot of this as it is. The real thing I wanna change here is have this request appointment button right here. Go to what will be our new page for, it's basically the contact page. So if we click right here, we can look and we can just copy this URL because this is where we're gonna want that to go. And I'm gonna make it so this button right here, when you click on it currently, it just doesn't go anywhere. It just goes up to the top of the page when you click on it. So I'm gonna make it so it links to the actual contact page or the request appointment page that we have it listed as right there. And then I'm also going to just go through and add a couple testimonials here on this page as well. So let's just dive in how to do that right here. If we go over, we can go and navigate over to our other page. So make sure you save and update anything that you haven't already. We'll go to Finder. And from here, we'll just go over and type in Practice Area. And right here is the page, Practice Area. And it will navigate us over there while staying in Elementor for the Builder. So from here, let's just scroll down and I'm gonna use this contact page that I copied the URL right here. And I'm gonna scroll down and I'm just gonna change this for where it goes. So if I click on this right here, you can go to where it says link right over here on the right, on the left side. And then you can just paste it in there. And right here you have link options. So you can choose if you want to open in a new window or not. I'm gonna just leave it as is and just click update. So now if I go over here to the practice area page, we should see that when we click on this, it's gonna actually take us to a different page this time and it will be the contact page. And there it takes us over to this contact page. Now there's no contact form on here. So I'm gonna get into that in a second in the next part of this tutorial here. But for now, let's go over adding a couple different testimonials here because I think this page is actually a pretty nice page. You would just need to edit the text where it says a short description for each one. Maybe you can change the images if you'd like, but that's very simple to do. I'm just gonna go over adding a new element and that is the testimonials one. So I'm gonna go down here, click on this. I'm gonna choose a two wide structure in this case. And I'll click the plus right here and I'll find testimonial. So let's just type in test and here it comes up. We can drag it over and drop it in. And right here we have our testimonial built right in in this format. So you can change the text here and just write something. And then if you wanted to, you can change the image as well. So you can click choose image. Now you might have to upload something here, but I'm just gonna put this here for now and insert it so we have something there. Here's the name, John Doe, title, designer. You can leave that out if you want. And that's how you would add one. Now let's say you're happy with that. You can literally just right click, duplicate it, and then you can drag it over here and drop it right in here and just edit it as you need be on this one. So let's say we want a different image. I'll insert that one. And I'm just gonna call her Jane Doe here in this case. So that's how you could add some easy testimonials right here to your website. I'm gonna click update to make the changes go into effect. And again, I really like how this page looked as it was. So I didn't wanna change a whole lot, but I wanted to at least show you how to set up a link here and have it go to the contact page. And then also just some basic testimonials on here. It's great to have that social proof or those testimonials showing throughout the website. It helps people build some trust into the company that they're looking at. Whether they believe it or not, it does have an effect on that. So next let's navigate over to the contact form page. I'm just gonna go right here again, three lines up here on the left, finder, and I'll go to contact, and we'll get started with editing this contact form here next. All right, so what I wanted to show you is right here, there's actually no form showing up. 
And if we actually click on where the contact form should be, it says WP Forms ID 674. And now let's just go over here and we'll go to where it says request appointment because that will take us to the contact page and there's just no form there. So this is actually an easy fix. We're going to have to save what we've been working on. We'll go to these three bars up here in the upper left and we'll click exit to dashboard. So we're back in the dashboard for the first time in a while here, but now we're going to navigate over to where it says WP Forms and this is our form builder. So right now you can see it says WP Forms ID equals 7 and this one said 600 something over here. So if we go back we can actually go and click edit on this contact us page and I just want you to take a look at the fields right here. It's actually already built for a request and appointment type form. It just isn't showing up on the page. So you can go through these and you can actually drag on them to reorder them and you can also duplicate the fields as well. You can also add new fields. So let's say you wanted to add a multiple choice. You could do that and drag it and drop it right in here. You can delete that. You can add a drop down or check boxes, let's say right here. So there's different options that you can do and add it to the field. I'm going to actually go down here, delete that multiple choice as well. And I'm going to leave it as is. So you can click save right here, but we're not done yet. You have to actually go over to where it says settings and where it says notifications right here. So this is where you'd want to put your send to email address. So where do you want the form to go? If you want it to go to the legal office, you could put their email right here. If you want it to go to a specific lawyer, maybe an intern that works there, maybe a secretary, whoever it is, you're going to need to put the email address where you want the messages to go right in this area right here and then save it. After you do that, you can go and click exit up here in the upper right. And what we're going to need to do is copy this short code right here. So it's WP Forms ID equals 7. And if we take that and we go back over here to contact, we're going to go to where it says edit with Elementor. And we're going to click on this box where the form should be right here. And then we're just going to simply paste in our form. And now you see it just populates right there on the screen where it was supposed to be. So we can click update right here. And if we click on right here, we can actually go in and change these icons. So right now they all say WordPress. They might actually say something else like Twitter or Facebook or something like that. If you click on it, you can actually go here and it says Facebook right here, but it has the WordPress icon. So you can actually delete that out of there if you'd like and then add. Let's see if they have a Facebook icon right here. They should. So you can actually click and add that right into the site as well. And now you see this Facebook icon and you could put their URL for their Facebook right here. And you can do the same thing for down here. This one says Twitter. I'm going to go and upload the Twitter image right here. It's pretty easy to set this up. Now, I don't know how many lawyers are on Twitter and things like that, but I guess it's another way to advertise. If we go right here, we can use this one says Google. So we'll just go to Google here. And it's for Google Plus, which I don't even know if it's supported anymore at this point. And this one right here says LinkedIn. And I bet that would be a pretty good place to find. Some clients would be on LinkedIn. So I'm going to put that one in here as well. So let's say you didn't like Google Plus, for example, here in this scenario. You can just X right there and get rid of it. You can center this below, but it kind of looks better under this text, I think, over to the left, how they have it. And I'm just going to click Update. So now we have a contact form where it works and we have our social media icons here on this contact page. So when someone clicks on request an appointment, they can be brought right to this contact page here on the site. So that about wraps up the contact page. I'm actually going to X out of it right here and then open up a new tab right here. And I'm just going to go through what we changed on the site a little bit and just a quick rundown of how our site came out to end here. So we changed the background image. We went through changing some of the text. We also went through how to link things. We didn't link this one in particular, but we did link from one page to another. And then I also covered a few other things like changing on the about page, such as putting in this law firm rating as the highest rating around in Denver and this frequently asked questions type elements right there in this practice area. I went into just some basic things like adding testimonials right here. We could add a spacer at the bottom to make it a little bit better. 
and we linked right here from this to the contact page so if we go over to that this request appointment page now has our social media icons and a contact form that actually works on it and we made a logo and redid this menu so we did a lot of little things here that helped you learn the basics of how to make a pretty nice looking website now I really wanted to do this so you can make a website quickly and save on costs at the same time because I want it to be at least beginner friendly or friendly for somebody out there who's on a budget the only cost really associated with making this was hosting and I tried to use a free builder and free theme to make it easier for everybody to be able to learn here and if you already had hosting it didn't cost you anything so I really hope that you just enjoyed this lawyer website tutorial and if you did please consider giving me a thumbs up or a like at the bottom of the video and also subscribing to the channel for more WordPress related content that I keep having come out regularly on the channel now I greatly appreciate you taking the time to go through this tutorial with me and I really hope that you have a wonderful day. Thanks again for watching and have a good one.